Well, it was in um, September, so he'd been in school, you know, about a month and a half, and um, no issues whatsoever. He was doing great, straight A's, no problems whatsoever. And then Monday morning, I get a phone call. It was a little after 9 a.m., just words I never thought I would ever hear from the school, which was, your son's been assaulted. Uh, well, that day, um... Yeah, he was, I was just in my locker and he just came up to me, shoved me, threw a punch, missed, and then just grabbed me um, from behind, threw me to the ground and then hit me a bunch. I was out. The assistant principal said that he was blindsided, there was nothing he could do, and I asked to see the video and about 10 seconds into it, I told him to shut it off and call the police. I felt that that day that that happened to him, I felt as I, I failed as a father. You know, it makes you feel horrible as a parent that we didn't give him the tools ahead of time to be able to defend himself. And that day he lost his innocence in my eyes um, because he lost that innocent little kid that can be around crowds, be around people and feel himself. Um, it made me feel like uh, that I'm vulnerable and I just felt less confident in myself. You, you knew it wasn't easy for him. He just, and still to this day, he's not really over it. He's not coped with it completely. It, I think it'll stay with him the rest of his life. I just want him to feel confident. Just have that self-confidence when he stands there, he's sure about himself and his environment, and he can, he can do whatever he wants. So the first time I saw the video of Austin's incident at school uh, was because a student sent it to me. Um, one of our Gracie University students had seen the video, of course was affected by it, knew that we could help in that type of situation, knew that we were passionate about the bullying uh, epidemic sweeping the nation, sent me the video, I checked it out, and it, it affected me. As gut-wrenching as it was, the fact that he just got beat up and he was still alive um, gave me hope and, and inspired me to do something about it. And, and that's when we you know, reached out. Fortunately enough, several months after I posted the video, I get a phone call. Um, Hi, Henner, this is Nicole, Nicole McDaniel, Austin's mom, and I'm like, yes. So I spoke to the mom, I told her that we were interested in bringing Austin out and sponsoring Austin to, uh, to come to California to get, you know, a week of intensive training with my brothers and I. Very confident that in one week we could change his life. When Austin and his family arrived at the Gracie Academy on day one, that th there was something in this kid that had been taken away from him. I guess in the simplest form, Austin did not own himself. You can tell that he's missing something. Everybody's missing something until they find jiu-jitsu. And at that moment, I knew we had our work cut out for us. We had to help him discover himself again. So day one, walking into the academy, um, you know, all, all of us as a family were nervous. I was just really nervous to meet Henner, um, but when I met him, he was he was really nice about it. When we first got here, I, I, I could tell Austin was excited, but he was still reserved. And uh, once I felt that, you know, they were comfortable with me, uh, I got Austin his gi, took him in, handed him a gi. He didn't know what the heck to do with it. Yeah, Henner gave me a, a gi. And I was, I was wondering like what it was because I'd never even seen one, really. And uh, he, of course, threw it on. I showed him how to tie his belt on day one. And it was very clear that he was very nervous and very uncomfortable in the Gracie Academy. Right off the bat, I laid him down and mounted on top of him. And I asked him, how might you push someone off from here? Any thoughts? He told me, um, find a way off. And I was pushing him, and I didn't know why he wouldn't get off. I could tell there was this there was this awkward discomfort with the fact that he remembered, it felt like. And it was very clear that he really, like most people, had no idea what to do if a situation, like what happened to him, were to happen again. And, and I kind of did that on purpose because I kind of wanted to bring the realness back because I felt like a problem well understood is a problem half solved. And by going back to the moment and really, to a certain degree, reliving it, it, uh, it allowed us to I guess bring back the realness of, of what he had to go through and then 
create an equal degree of urgency for what task we have lying ahead and what we have to overcome. When Henry got off me and I mounted on him and he just pushed me off, I was like, what? How do you, how do, you do that? It just shows like Jiu Jitsu, you don't have to use much energy as the other person. So like if you know how to do it, you can just hold them there while they keep squirming around trying to get you off. Day one was only Austin and I training, the parents watching. I did that on purpose. I wanted them to see, um, you know, the initial, the beginning, so that they knew where we were starting and, uh, and they could then have the comparison to where we ended up. Day one just blew my mind, you know, just the things that Austin learned in, in day one. Um, and if that's all he would have received was day one training, that in itself would have been very beneficial to him. On Tuesday class, um, since I had already gone Monday, I wasn't, I wasn't really nervous at all. After Monday, it was like Tuesday, I was excited to come back because I was going to learn more stuff that was going to help me more. Day two comes in, come in, already bros now. I know the connection is there. There's no more awkwardness. He knows what to expect and uh, we get right to work. Day two, we decide that, you know, we really want to spend some connection time with Austin, with Matt, with Nicole. So we went to the beach. I don't know how often he's been to the beach. I don't think he's been to the beach for sure on this west coast. Crawled up and down the rocks, they were finding um, crabs. Eve, Henry's fiance, was freaking out because he was holding it next to her. Um, did some grappling on the, on the sand, did some standing up, some pummeling, some clinching drills. That was the first time I really got to connect with Nicole and find out from her perspective as a mother how this situation really felt to her. It was clear to me that she, this, this had never been solved. This happened, you know, six, eight months ago and she still didn't feel at peace with it. Anytime we meet somebody new, we introduce them to jujitsu and we introduce them to our way of life, our way of eating. And he had acai for the first time. We did the acai, amazing. Eve and I prepared it the way we do every day and we shared it. I mean, amazing fruit, like very healthy. Um, and they had the bowl and, and they devoured it. I'm, I'm not a fruit and vegetable eater at all, but Henry made that acai and it was, it was good. Not only did he get introduced to acai, but he got introduced to the idea of eating foods that are good for you. Yeah, I will be back for the acai one day. On day three is when I decided to begin introducing the psychological training, the, the, the talking, the standing up for yourself, the posture, the no fidgeting. If you want to say that, go ahead and say it. It's pretty good. Did you believe yourself? No. We, we, we identified the problem. And that's when we got to work on rebuilding and, and, and essentially teaching him that the more you learn how to fight, the less likely you are to ever need to. You can blink after, but during the actual message, it's like this. Don't ever do that again. You have to teach him the self-defense concepts first for this idea of assertiveness and posture and strong confidence as a deterrent to bullying to take effect. You have to actually know how to defend yourself. He's, he's picking up all these different techniques and tools and um, it's absolutely amazing. It was good to see a smile on his face. And it just, as a mom, it just really touched my heart just to see him in a good spot after so many months of, you know, just kind of holding his head down and just, you know, he just wasn't feeling it inside of himself. You could just see him, you could see him as the day went on, he was just more fire in him. He was more confident by himself. He was getting a lot more sure of himself. Uh, we also went um, go-kart racing with uh, the Gracie family and Austin was stoked. That's one of his favorite things to do. He absolutely loves it. We did three races. That was pretty intense. Scratch the a broken voice and his whole function shooting with palms to his conceit and all for nothing. For nothing. All in 
and all, it was an incredible time. He had a blast, we had a blast. Day four, we went to uh, Beverly Hills Gracie Academy. And uh, training Beverly Hills, we intensified it even more. We're connecting, intensifying, building. Thursday, we take the family to Runyon Canyon, and they had a great time. It just kind of tested them physically a little bit. Again, more one-on-one -on -one time, more discussion time, and you know, just pushing Austin in a different way. I don't think he's a big-time hiker, but I do think that when he got to the top, there was this feeling of like, okay, it's a little mini goal, it's a little mini accomplishment, and that's how you build confidence. It was just, it was a, it was a nice family atmosphere and a lot of fun. Friday, got up back at Torrance, more training, and uh, you know, this is the day where we're thinking, okay, what do we have to lose? Let's turn it up, let's let them have it. And we intensified. Yeah, this is when it got um, really intense with Henner and Hedon. Um, we were just, I was going head on head with each one of them so that they would make sure that I had learned all the moves and I could put them together. I just was blown away by how much Austin learned in one week. I couldn't believe that he was able to not only address, you know, from, from the very beginning of the situation all the way to how to handle it at the end. Wow, after an entire week, the things that Austin has learned, amazing. I, it absolutely blows my mind. It's remarkable. This, this week has been the best thing for him in the world. My grandfather always told me, he said, Hidon, you have no idea what your potential is. And I'm gonna tell Austin the same thing. Austin, you have no idea what your potential is. Well, what's more important than the belt is congratulations on your first strike. To, to see Henner and his brother hand Austin a belt and his first strike after this week of training, it, it was emotional for me. I, I'm a proud dad, I always have been, no matter what he's ever done. But that, that took me back. That was, that was pretty special for, for them to do. I didn't expect the stripe. That, that felt good to get the stripe because it felt like I'd progressed. And, and, and we felt it important to recognize that besides the fact that he deserved it, we think it was a good step in, in letting him know that he's making progress. It's very real. Whether he sees it or not, whether he believes it fully or not, we believe it, we see it, and uh, we want him to take it home and continue the fire. He had two boxes they gave him to me. One was the, uh, the framed photo that, um, of me and the UFC fighters. And then the other one was um, Eve, Henner's fiance. She signed it, wrote a message, which I thank her for that, thank you. They said they had one more gift, so I was like, wow, what could be better than you know all this, you know? So we decided it would be appropriate to give them the official Gracie Garage grappling mats. So um, we hooked them up and they're set. They have everything they need to keep the ball rolling. We can put down at our house, we can train regularly. Even if Austin never trains again for the rest of his life, he's going to be okay. He now understands certain things, both about fighting and about interaction. But the reality is, we only taught him all those techniques so he would never have to use them. Yeah, he, uh, he's definitely a different kid. I've noticed the last few days, I can walk around him. I can walk behind him. He's not... He's not scared of what's coming at him broadside because I think in his mind, he's like, bring it. I mean, I sit here today after a week worth of him training and he's smiling and he's energetic and he's, you know, laughing and having a good time. I mean, I couldn't believe that was the same kid that walked in on Monday to the academy. The same kid that walked in and, and was, you know, really shy and really kind of unsure about how to handle these situations. By the end of the week, it was like fire. A fire inside him had been lit and he's just ready. He's ready for anything. When he got here, he was the only child. Now he has two big brothers. He's going to be okay. It's just, it's great to have that feeling of, okay, my kid's back. He's back. I guess, you know, now the only challenge is, you know, the hundreds and thousands, the millions of, of kids out there, you know, who are in Austin's situation, you know, who've had their, their, their kind of their dignity and, and, and their, 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 their core ripped away by an aggressor against their will. 
So it's not a matter of the formula. It's not a matter of the method. It's not a matter of the objective and what we need to do for these kids, these targets of this harassment. It's just a matter of the message getting out there. I can ask for, for anyone out there who's watching this and uh, you know, who, who also is passionate about you know, putting an end to this, this bullying you know, epidemic that we're faced with is, is help me help them. You know, help us help them. And the way we do that is get the message out there that information like this does exist and it works. And, and that's it. I just think that, you know, literally every single time someone commits suicide due to bullying, it could have been stopped. So we have a lot of work ahead of us, but, um, but we're definitely covering some, some solid ground. And, uh, you know, couldn't do it without my family, my fiance Eve, and, uh, you know, the rest of the crew here at the Gracie Academy. We're changing lives every step of the way. And uh, we won't stop till I drop.